turn now to the independence criterion and show that not only is the negative result that Adam is false true, but also, uh, but so also is the positive result that according to physics, the material world is a single indivisible whole. Now, we all have a feeling for the difference between a whole, such as my desk or my body, and a mere aggregate of parts, such as the, the objects on my desk. If we are asked to say, what it is that makes one thing a unity and another thing an aggregate, we would probably say that spatial con contiguity of the parts is necessary for something to be a unity. The molecules that constitute my desk and the cells that constitute my body are next to one another in space. On the other hand, if two or more things are or can be spatially separated, such as the objects on my desk, then that is usually sufficient to conclude that these objects do not form a natural unity, but merely an aggregate of parts. However, it is a dramatic consequence of the quantum theory, a consequence initially observed by Einstein, that spatial separation is not a sufficient condition for individuation. Let us explain. Consider the following thought experiment. We get two identical movie cameras, which we place at right angles to each other. They are each focused on the same live cat, and we begin and stop each camera at the same time. It is obvious that the films from the two cameras will look quite different from one another. When one shows the cat's head, the other will show the cat's side, and so on. Suppose we give our two films to someone who does not uh, know that they are films of the same cat, taken simultaneously, but from different perspectives. Could this person, by analyzing the films frame by frame, arrive at the conclusion that the two films are films of one and the same cat? The answer is, of course, yes. There would be frame by frame correlations between the two films that would lead an observer to conclude that the two films are different perspectives of the same underlying reality, the cat. Now, the quantum theory predicts, and these predictions have been verified, that under certain conditions, two spatially separated objects will behave as if they are different perspectives of the same underlying reality. That is, a frame-by-frame -frame analysis will reveal correlations between the behavior of the two spatially uh, objects. These correlations indicate that the two objects, which appear to be distinct, are really parts of or aspects of a single underlying unity. And this is what is meant when I said that spatial separation is not sufficient for individuation. For although the two objects, atoms, particles, in question may be very far apart spatially, they are not independently existing individuals, but are parts of a larger unity. Now, under what conditions does this feature of quantum wholeness manifest itself? The conditions are simple. Any two or more particles that interact with each other will exhibit this feature of wholeness and will continue to exhibit it even after the interaction has ceased. No matter how far the particles move away from each other spatially, the particles will continue to exhibit the kind of correlations that lead us to conclude that they, the particles, are not independently existing individuals, but are aspects or parts of a larger unity. This larger unity includes the two particles, but has holistic features that cannot be explained in terms of two independently existing particles. These holistic features will continue indefinitely until, or unless, something external to the two particle system interferes with it, destroying the unity. Summarizingly, quantum theory shows that one, any two or more interacting particles form a whole that is not reducible to the sum of its parts. Two, this whole persists even after the interaction has ceased and the particles have, have become spatially separated. And three, this wholeness can be broken only if the system interacts with something external to it. What can we conclude from this about the physical universe as a whole? According to modern cosmology, the universe is expanding. This means that the past, or in the past, the universe was smaller, and the further back we go in time, the smaller the universe gets. At the moment of the Big Bang, all the stuff, or energy, of the physical universe is concentrated at a single point. Clearly at this time, and shortly afterward, everything uh, is in a very strong interaction with everything else. Therefore, at the time of the Big Bang, conditions, uh, condition one above is satisfied, and everything in the universe must re be regarded as constituting a whole that is not reducible to the sum of its parts. Furthermore, since there is nothing external to the universe, there is nothing that could break this wholeness, and so condition three can never be satisfied. 
Hence, according to condition two, this wholeness must persif persist even after the parts of the universe have become spatially separated. The entire physical universe is thus a single individual, a whole, a unity, not divisible into parts. Recall our previous discussion of physics' uh, unsuccessful search for the ultimate building blocks of physical reality. The intuition that guided us, from molecules to atoms to elementary particles, is that whatever is invariant under a given transformation must be more real than, or more fundamental than, those things that change, that either begin or cease to, or cease to exist. Physicists' search for ultimate units was unsuccessful because there is no particle that, that continues to exist under all transformations. The only thing that remains invariant under all possible transformations is the universe as a whole. For no matter what changes may occur within the universe, the universe always retains its unity as a single, indivisible whole. It is thus the most fundamental reality, or I should say, the only fundamental reality, since there is nothing external to it. I think this is sufficient to demonstrate that all there is is a single indivisible being, an individual whole, an organic unity, and can in no way be regarded as a mere aggregate of parts. Yet I must be, uh, it must be admitted that when we look around us, it certainly seems as if what we perceive is a bunch of disconnected objects. But from the fact that we do not perceive with our senses the interconnection between things, it does not follow that all things are, are not really interconnected. For, as we shall see later, our body, which itself is a part of the unbroken wholeness of nature, has the ability, through its sense organs, to create images of things as if they were separate and distinct. So the fact that the world appears to us as if it were constituted by separately existing things tells us more about the nature of our sense organs than about the nature of things as they are in themselves. Science, which transcends the limitations of human perception, perceptions uh, give us an understanding of things as they are in themselves, not merely as they appear to human beings. And according to this understanding, all things are interconnected in such a way as to constitute a single indivisible being. Therefore, those who have been reluctant to embrace a holistic worldview out of fear that such a worldview is unscientific may now completely relinquish their fears. For holism is not only fully compatible with modern science, it is the only worldview that is. This excursion into physics not only informs us about the nature of the world, that its holistic, or that its nature is holistic, not atomistic, but also tells us something about the nature of the, uh, of the understanding uh, itself. For whereas sense perception always works in terms of concrete images of things, the understanding, if we take modern science to exemplify what it is to understand, works in terms of those features or properties that individual things have in common, and that remain uh, invariant as the individuals themselves undergo all sorts of change and transformation. It must be emphasized that methodolo methodologically speaking, both atomism and holism can give genuine understanding of particular things, and science avails itself of both methodologies. Any finite thing is both constituted by smaller units and itself constitu constitutes a part of a larger unit. The human body, for example, is constituted by molecules that exist both before and after the human body comes into and passes out of existence. The molecule is therefore a useful concept through which the body can be understood. Molecules are common to all bodies and are invariant as individual bodies arise and perish. But equally, the human body is a part of a larger ecosystem, the atmosphere, the food chain, and so forth, which it requires in order to maintain its form. This larger ecosystem is also, as were the molecules, common to all human bodies and invariant as individual bodies arise and perish, and hence the human body can also be understood in terms of the role it plays, its function within the larger ecosystem. From a metaphysical perspective, however, there is only one ultimate invariant, and uh, as we have shown, uh, the universe as a whole. For only God, or all there is, is common to all things and remains invariant as individual things come into being and pass away. Therefore, from this ultimate perspective, God is the cause of things and is the ultimate sufficient reason through which all things must be understood.